Match day two of the Euro kickoff and three results are in. Let's look at that. Okay, second day of the Euros are concluded and we have three match day results in. The first one being a 1-1 draw between Switzerland and Wales. Um, it was probably the most exciting game of the match day for footballing reasons um, and uh, saw the two teams walk away with the 1-1 draw. Yeah, um, I would say the Welsh team started off well. I thought uh, I was actually quite surprised. I was like, oh, well, okay. Uh, I actually, I think we predicted a Switzerland uh, win. I think we put 2-1 for Switzerland. Um, so when Wales started, I was like, okay, I think I underestimated the Welsh or overestimated the uh, Swiss team. But slowly Switzerland built up into the first half. They controlled the game. Um, they rightfully went in front uh, with uh, Mbolo, who actually impressed me quite a lot. And then um, Moore scored with the Welsh. I think both of set pieces. So the chances, the goals came from those, but chances were created from the Swiss side. Yeah, the Swiss team probably looked hotter over the 90 minutes and Brill Imbolo was man of the match. We also had him down as first goal scorer of the game, which came out to be correct. Uh, we did say 2-1 and uh, came very close to getting the correct result. I think the Swiss could have edged that game 2-1. Um, but yeah, 1-1 one, one draw. Both teams are going to be happy, even happier the Azzurri. So, yeah, I think the 1-1 one, one draw, uh, the Swiss team see it more as a loss. Yesterday, I was lucky enough to, after the game, uh, meet up with a group of uh, Swiss fans, uh, got to see their view of the game. Uh, they see it more as a loss compared to what I think the Welsh team do. Uh, the way that the fixture list is set up, uh, it was it's actually going to end up with the Welsh team uh, playing uh italy at the end and italy might have been qualified so it actually might work in their favor uh moving on to the second uh, game of the day we move over to copenhagen uh unfortunately there uh on the 42nd minute of the first half where there was an incident with the player christian erickson um it seems to well it's a medical emergency uh, the game was suspended for a while we have a video going into detail of what happened with erickson there uh, this clearly impacted the game. In the second half, a few Danish players were shook. Uh, main players, for example, Simon Kier, was actually substituted around the 63rd minute uh, as he was unable to carry on just uh, the way that that medical emergency affected him. Uh, this resulting into uh, a Finland winner lane. Uh, yeah, we had this game down as a 2-0 for Denmark. Uh, as you mentioned, the players quite shook uh, after what happened to the team captain. Uh, the game ended 1-0, Pio Polo getting the goal for Finland. And um, yeah, I think uh, this is a, a particular game and uh, I don't think we can read too much into the Danish form in this one. As you said, I think their heads were elsewhere. Yeah, um, and also from the first half, they were dominated completely. And also just to correct you, uh, Kier is the Danish captain, even though Eriksen is vice-captain. So yes, uh, we're on you on that. Okay. Um, moving on to the last game of the day in St. Petersburg, we saw Belgium take on Russia. Uh, we had predicted this game as a 3-1 for the Belgians. It ended... Which we came close. That was the free kick at the end. Yeah, that free kick at the end. Um, I was hoping and praying that it went in for our result. Um, but yeah, uh, big rom as we predicted carrying the team. What do you think, Damien? Yeah, we had uh, Romelu Lukaku scoring the first goal and we clearly hedged our bets there, which came into fruition. It seems like he's bringing in the form from Inter. Both goals were... The first one was just a peculiar goal as he started in an offside position. And I, I think, yeah, it makes me understand the new rule a bit more clearer. But when I saw it, I was like, oh, this is offside. And then obviously they had to explain it to me. But anyway, a uh, clear big mistake from the Russian defense there. Yeah, no. Uh Definite mistake. And the second goal uh, that he got that night, uh, a replica of the goal scored against Milan in the derby, just on the other side of the field, bustling past the last defender and burying it at, uh, at the edge of the post. But Belgium looked good. Quite a team to reckon with. Yeah, Belgium, as we said in our prediction, one of the teams to watch for this tournament. Yeah, so uh, moving in today, we go to a few other fixtures today in the Euro. Uh, what is the fixture that sticks out for you? Yeah, uh, for me, I would have to say the game tonight between the Ukraine and the Netherlands in our tournament predictor. 
I did have the Netherlands down as one of those dark horses to watch. I still think we should all keep an eye on uh, Weighorst, the striker. Um, he's one to watch, and I wouldn't be surprised if we find him at a big club next season. Nice. Yeah, I'm excited for England, Croatia. I think I had 0 0, and then we decided to hedge and move up to 1 1, seeing that we think we're going to see goals. But yeah, I still think it's going to be a draw, and let's see what comes out of that. Uh, happy to guy, provide you guys more insights uh, once the game's over. Yeah, and the other game of the day to keep an eye on is, of course, Austria and Macedonia. Keep an eye on that one. A very organized Austria team up against Goran Pandiev's Macedonia. Awesome. And uh, we will see you next time on the pink table.